My name is Mark Parker, I'm the producer for The Bearded Ladies. Yeah, that's based upon a tabletop RPG from uh, the 1980s and it was released in Sweden. So it's a bit like, uh, it's, 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 it's somewhat similar to uh, the Gamma World uh, RPGs. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a game that's set in a post-apocalyptic world uh, where the humans have uh, no longer uh, existing and uh, mutants rule the, the world. Okay, well, the first thing you've got to remember with role-playing games is that uh, on tabletop games, your imagination is literally the limit to what you can do. So we, we can't really do all of those features 100% uh, justice. So uh, we made a tactical game uh, where, where it's uh, a bit more of an adventure tactical game uh, rather than a one-to-one uh, -one RPG because that was a very, very difficult thing to emulate in this uh, game. So we, we, we knew our limits from the start and we worked with those to make uh, an enjoyable game that I think everybody who likes to pen and paper game should also find it enjoyable. Uh, well, yeah, of course, we played our uh, peers' games. Uh, we looked at XCOM, we looked at games like uh, Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle and, and, and other uh, popular games like uh, Divinity as well. Uh, yeah, but I mean, everyone takes a leaf out of each other's book, but we, we introduced our uh, real-time uh, aspects and stealth aspects to make us stand out from the crowd. So yeah, in real-time you can actually walk around and, and like real-time, you can, you can go and explore the world and find the interesting things around the world. You can position your characters uh, prior to battle, so you can you can ambush enemies, or you can sneak past enemies, or you can uh, go and loot uh, enemy camps without enemies uh, getting into battle if you're if you're stealthy enough. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can do in the real time, and then it goes in fluidly into a tactical mode when you're in combat, and then fluidly back out again into ta into real time after tactical com is completed. Yeah, well, the story will be revealed to the player as they play through the game. Uh, the, all the characters are involved in there and they have a full uh, dialogue and voice acting for that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to spoil too much with the story. Uh, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, discover, a self-discovery story, maybe an origin story. Yeah, something like that. Uh, we have a story structure that sort of follows the, uh, the, the uh, red line through the, through the game. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, you can do little side areas and things, but for the most part, there's one story that you follow. Well, uh, in one of the uh, expansions for the Mutant books, uh, for the pen and paper game, there was a uh, introduction of anthropomorphic uh, characters, and we found those would be interesting characters to use, and uh, rather than just the standard soldiers or whatever. So we wanted to have some uh, cool characters. So we we picked uh, uh, some cool animals to to make into uh, characters for the game. Uh, there's a tradition of Swedish role-playing games of ducks being a, a character class in some of the old games. Um, so this is a little nod to that by having ducks, for example, as a, as a character in our uh, game. Well, there's, uh, there's more to, to, uh, to uh, recruit uh, around, uh, around the game's uh, world. Uh, you would be able to uh, switch between those at any time outside of combat, and you can have a, a maximum of uh, three persons in each party. There will be at least one additional animal uh, mutant in that uh, roster of unlockable characters. Well, they have their own unique uh, mutation skill tree, so they will have certain things that the other characters can't do. For example, one might introduce a stealth uh, feature, and one might have a uh, psi power feature where they can do some sort of uh, mind control and other things. Uh, well, we, we've got a, a lot of different mutations. I don't, don't want to go into all of them, or some of them that I haven't shown you guys now. Uh, it would be a bit of a spoiler, but I, I, we've got things like the moth wings, we've got the stone skin, and yeah, you saw the one with the vines where you can control the, ne uh, the trees nearby and they can wrap their uh, roots around enemies' legs. Um, I, personal favorite I really like is the super jump. You can jump really far, you can jump across uh, different areas, you can jump up to high points where you can get a good vantage point to shoot. So that's a pretty cool one. 
Oh, the, the, the transition between real time and tactical I think is pretty unique. Also the world, we made a really interesting world. I mean, by the very nature of tactical games, they're usually on like a grid system. Uh, our game, uh, we try and make it look a lot more organic and interesting and, 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 and uh, as a result, people would want to keep playing and looking around every corner to see what they can see next, so yes.